Greetings, people. Hmm. I thought of this a while back. Um, question I was playing with it. I've played with it for a long time, but like, yeah, it's, I revisited it a few days back, which is, is death a tragedy? That's something funny, isn't it? Like, because um, the way I think about it is, okay, you know something is going to come no matter what. You're given over years upon years of time um, to know that it's coming. Yet when it comes, everybody just comes like it's a surprise. And I want to be very careful whenever I talk about this topic, mainly because I could offend a lot of people who lost loved ones. And I'm not making light of the topic, but... The question that always comes to my mind when I see people breaking down and um, crying and like there are ch some people change after a loved one is dead and all I can think of is didn't you see this coming and I'm not talking oh was there what oh they were at the hospital and they um, they've been at the hospital for years and now finally the moment came and you already knew but now that it's over um, you know, a conflict between a sense of relief that they're gone, their suffering is over, but also a, uh, another belief that you never, or another point that you never see them again, conflict in your head, and the mix of guilt and, uh, and um, of sadness melt into a big feeling of dread. No, no, I'm not talking that. I'm talking just a regular, you know, accident, um, passing on, you know, somebody who just simply passed on, on, on his bed peacefully, whatever it is. Didn't you see this coming? What I mean by this is, okay, how many deaths occur a day? How many occur um, an hour? How many occur a minute? You know, how often? And you look at the numbers and again, shouldn't you have seen this coming? This is important for me because um, if you know that, for example, something bad's gonna happen, say on the 25th of April this year, um, the stars are gonna align in a specific way and that will generate a heat wave which will affect the crops. You know this is gonna happen. Let's make it even better. We don't know the date. We, do, we just know that this is gonna happen. Um, you know it's gonna affect your place of residence or your company. It's, you know what, let's not go far. Why am I making this fancy example? There's gonna be summer in a few months. You're gonna prepare, right? You're gonna buy light clothes, you're gonna buy a hat, you're gonna um, prepare your shades if, you're that, if, you're, if you wear shades. Um, if you're in a particularly hot country, you're gonna prepare the ACs, you make sure everything's there, or if you don't prepare the ACs, at least have the money for it. Um, just in case, right? And when the crisis hits, you're ready for it. Summer still sucks, but hey, at least you have these uh, preparations that make the heat and the, the agony less. But with death, nobody seems prepared for some reason. Like, you know, when you have, whenever you have a big fight with your dad, never a single, just you attack him, never closure, never anything. And then your dad dies or you die in whoever, whichever party survived for the rest of their days is like, oh, I wish I did it. You know, again, they do the mental masturbation regret thing, right? I sit there it's like, I should have, I should have. And again, I'm not making light of any of these issues. Um, they're intense and they're powerful, but I want to show that it's unreasonable. This is the most important thing for me in this particular recording session, which is um, there is a certain lack of reason in not expecting death and preparing for it. See, as a young man, whenever I got into a fight with someone, I never really let it cook. You know, I never sw not swallow my pride and fix it. And we don't have to stay friends. We don't have to stay close. We just have to have closure. So if something happens tomorrow, um, 
we don't end on bad terms. I know how bad it can get if somebody dies with not without with regrets, and how quickly that happens, and how suddenly it stuns everybody. You know, everybody thinks like, you know, pride is this big unit, this big currency you need to protect. When, but then when something tragic happens, your pride just shits itself, and then now it's just regret. Well, you better think, right? So, I, I asked the question, is death a tragedy? And in my opinion, it is not, because you should prepare for it. And when it happens, if you're religious, you should be happy. And if you're not religious, you should be prepared. You know what I mean? If you're a religious person, let's say, you're like, you know, you know somebody died, he's gonna t go to heaven. Most likely, right? Because he's your like he's your religious group. If he's not from your religious group, what can we do? But let's keep the example simple, all right? And um, he's gonna go to heaven. I've always like I was really annoyed, you know, when I see somebody like howling at a funeral when a very pious person dies, and I'm like, like why? Like as far as you're concerned, he's going to heaven. Oh, because we'll miss him. But he's going to an awesome place way away from the pains and sorrows of life. You should be happy for him, right? They hear that, but their hearts don't hear. I, I echo, but still, still, you know? And then there are non-religious people. Okay, depending on your belief system, if you're not religious, like, regardless of what happens, you know it's coming. So be ready, be strong, be at peace, make your, do your dues. That goes for, you know, for religious people as well. It's a good advice overall, but um, I can't give you closure or relief at the death, but I can give you strength to handle it. And like, you know, it's coming, prepare, get closure, build, fix bridges. You know, with people, make sure everything's going on. So when death comes, it is not a tragedy because it doesn't have to be. It can be a celebration. To me, that's how I picture a funeral in my head. Like if I think about it, a funeral shouldn't be a place of sadness. It should be a, a place of celebration. A celebration of the person who just passed. Um, it can be tragic if it was a very young person, like a 10-year-old or a 5-year-old or even a 20-year-old that got, died in a sudden accident and, you know, they didn't get to live their life, if you will. But if death happens in a normal way, shouldn't that be a celebration of that person's, what that person has done? Shouldn't it be a remembrance and a nostalgia um, in the air, you know? Everybody's sitting talking about how great the guy is or how bad, you know, how, you know, he was, he gets so angry, his face reddens and he starts throwing stuff everywhere and it used, it used to, it used to bother you. But now that, uh, now he's gone, you actually can like, will miss it. And you talk, you talk about what, what you liked or didn't like about the person and his, you know, his uh, greatness and his failures and and then have that recorded and uh, you know in the annals of history and just lay lay the body let it rest right right it's a heavy thing to tell people cuz i've said it before and people don't really agree with me i don't know really how how to convey my point to the maximum because a lot of people consider me cold, robotic, distant in these topics, like I don't care, right? And it's not that. It's that there's a difference between an unprepared person and a prepared person. And not to make fun of the unprepared person, but I can take the blow, and I will. And that's because I've prepared. If somebody is going to die, every time I go to bed, I make peace with that. I know that if I open my eyes tomorrow, chances are somebody I know and love is dead. And I have to deal with that. And 
if I close my eyes, I may not open them again. And if that happens, I better well make sure anything that needs to be said has been said. And if you ask me a question on my deathbed, do I regret anything? I tell you no. And again, death doesn't have to be a tragedy. It can be the greatest sense of glory and the greatest sense of closure after a well-deserved uh, or a well-lived uh, life. So yeah, that's my two cents on the issue and uh, I'll be seeing you on the next one.